Excuse me, I have a seat, guys. Welcome to Fit Forecast. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. Uh, we have an important and what seems to be a touchy subject for everybody, and it's the unhealthiness in children, child obesity, um, and what pretty much comes along with that plays plays a role in that. And what do you guys start for us, Brandon? Um, so the, the first thing that I do want to say is something along the lines of what John said. If we hurt your feelings today, we apologize. Um, but it is a very touchy subject. It's a very sensitive subject for a lot of people. Um, and I kind of want to lead off with a story that Eric wanted to share. Guys, what um, kind of led me to, uh, to propose this topic to everybody this week was uh, this past weekend, I ran a 5K with my niece. She's 10. And, um, you know, it was with all of the local schools that uh, the girls are in a club. And, uh, you know, all the local schools got together and they had a 5K for these girls as part of their after school club. Um, it was a great event. Uh, the people that put it on did an excellent job. Everybody had fun. And it looked like that everybody really enjoyed themselves throughout the the run and the experience. Uh, my niece and I ran it. Uh, she ran the whole thing. I was really proud of her. And uh, one thing that I just couldn't let go as we were running was um, the amount of kids that couldn't run. Uh, the amount of kids that were overweight. And the amount of kids that literally just didn't even try. And it just really struck a chord with me, and immediately upon completing the race, I messaged the fellows here and I said, hey, I've got our topic, and it's going to be childhood obesity. So that's kind of where we started, and I'll tell you, it was, it was fairly disturbing. It really was, and uh, you know, hopefully we can shed some light and help some people today. So I, we're going to try to approach this from a uh, two-headed aspect in terms of answering the question is, why are kids today obese? And those two different aspects are going to be from a parent standpoint and then from a kid's standpoint. We're going to touch on a lot of topics, starting first with, most importantly, the parents' aspect of it. So um, one of the biggest issues that we have, and it may feel like we're all over the place with the parents' aspect, but uh, the first one is parents who don't have enough time to prioritize uh, health and nutrition for their kids. Who wants to go first? Anything? Uh, realistically, guys, I think that that is a cop out. Right. Um, present society is is more health conscious than they have ever been. Ever. I'm in the wrong way though, too. They tend to focus on certain things that they think are the right things, mm -hmm. and so it could be just misinformation too that they're using that, that's hurting the kids. This is true. Um, you know, and but the thing is to say that you don't have time. It's a cop out. It's a total cop out. You're taking the easy route. Um, you know, I was kind of an overweight kid. Uh, you know, I had my whole swan story. Uh, but, you know, I, <laughs> my parents were very busy growing up. Right. And my parents, you know, relied on my grandmother to feed us. And my grandmother was really with, you know, spaghetti, heat and eat foods. Ooh. Everything was real quick. Can I go grab right? But, you know... You know, my father was still very active in my life, and he always played with me every night, and we always went outside and played and all this, that, and the other, when he finally did get home from work. But to say that you don't have time is a total cop-out, because, you know, my dad made time. So, you know, my mother made time when they could. They were lucky to have my grandma. But, you know, to say that you don't have time to make health and fitness a priority in your children's lives, I, I, I can't get behind that because I watched both my parents work 60 hours a week growing up and I played every sport under the sun. One of the things that, that drives me crazy with parenting is that people are just lazy and, and I'm a parent so I, I get it. You know, I work seven days a week and sometimes it's, it's one of those things where you don't make your child's nutrition a priority. You know, it's, your kids shouldn't ask, mommy can we go to McDonald's every day on the way home from school? Um, and I hear a lot from clients in terms of, you know, what they feed their kids, and it really shouldn't be that different from what you're feeding yourself, you know, so it's, um, nutritionally, I find that most kids have too much sugar in their diets, most kids have too much processed foods in their diets, and most of the time, 
we have too many activities in our lives that revolve around food. You know, you take your kids to the movies, what are you doing? You're eating. You take your kids to what? Uh, um, name something else kids go. Uh, what's the, the one with the big mouse? What's Chuck E. Cheese. You know, Chuck E. Cheese. It's about food. Everything you do is about food. I talked to one of my clients this morning who I've helped lose 60 pounds, and she was very overweight as a kid, and at some point she ended up going to a quote-unquote fat camp. And I asked her about her experience growing up. She literally said her parents tried to control her with food. Anytime she was in trouble, they took away ice cream. Or anytime uh, she did something right, they gave her food. They gave her too much power. So, excuse me, they gave food too much power in her life. Um, and as she grew up, everything was about food, you know. And it's one of those things where parents teach your kids at a young age, you know, about healthy options. You know, you don't necessarily always have to give them garbage every single day. Um, what do you guys say in terms of, let's say, for the single parent who never played sports. Let's say the single mom who has a little boy who wants to play football and she's apprehensive about letting him play a particular sport that she never did. Like, how would you advise that particular parent? I would say let them experience it. Um, if it's something that your kid wants to do, I don't think that you should, and now I'll come right out, I'm not a parent. But, you know, I think if it's something that your kid wants to do, I really do think that you should allow them to experience that. Let them try it. If they, don't try, if they don't enjoy it, they don't like it, then tell them, you know what, we'll try something else. It's not for you. It's not the end of the world if you didn't like it. Like, you know, for me, growing up, soccer. Wanted to try it. All my friends tried it. I hated it. It was pointless to me. I played football and baseball. So, you know, it was just one of those things where I wanted to do it. I tried it. Didn't like it. No big deal. My dad was pumped. I played more baseball. Right. So, well, let me ask you this, because obviously I know, Eric, you played football in high school and college. I played in high school and college. John, did you guys play sports in high school, college, all, Little League, anything? All through. All through? Why? Because that's what we did. Right. You, you spent all your time outside. If, if you were inside, you did something wrong. Okay. That's how we were punished. It was... Oh, you didn't finish your schoolwork. Mm -hmm. You stay inside and finish it. You don't go outside until you're done. It's not. You don't get to play Xbox till you're done. You don't get ice cream till you're done. It sucked being inside. Right. It sucked being inside. It still sucks being inside sometimes. You know, it's like we talked about winter before and how it's dark when we get to work and dark when we go home. But when you're a kid and you have that little option of light, you want to be outside as long as you can all the time. Um, we played. I played sports all season. Mm -hmm. Spring, summer, winter, fall. There was something every single season. And both my parents worked and they found ways to do it. You make, you have neighbors, you have people that can take your kids to... Right, you get them involved. Yeah, you, you, just, you alternate. Yeah. It's, a, it's a community thing. It's, you're, you're not playing with kids from other states. They're in your same neighborhood. So make friends, like work together. Everybody should be working together on this one. What about you, Gabe? Did you play sports as a kid? I mean... <clears throat> I, I did martial arts from the time I was 10, and then I eventually started teaching uh, for years after that. But I, I played sports all my life with doing karate, and I consider that a sport as well. So I was always double booked, especially in the spring of lacrosse. Um, I played a lot of soccer when I was younger, did a traveling team for a little while. Uh, I've, I've done a lot of stuff uh, in, in my youth in terms of being active. We lived on a street that didn't have any, like, like we had houses, but it was a community. So I used to have to ride my bike all the way down to go see my cousin in a community near me, to actually like play like pick up games of football and stuff mm -hmm. in the summertime and all that. Um, I was really active. See, that's, that's where I feel like a lot of this goes to. It's the encouragement of getting your kids to be active. At the same note though, guys, I played copious amounts of video games because to me, me too. but me to too. me it was a bigger thing about getting, that to me, video games aren't just relaxation. They intrigue the mind, they help build stimuli there. Um, they also are one of the best ways to kind of encourage kids to see what's out there. So I'd be outside playing, I'd you know, wear my body down, and then my mind was still active, and I was intriguing my mind, I was continuing to grow that way. So I feel like it's not just about being inside and stopping kids, it's really that failure to keep them to be active at some point in the day. And I mean, we, we're not structured for that. Um, so you're looking at it from an aspect of just being more holistic so, you know, not only exercising kids, kids are only doing one aspect of it right now. They're not exercising their bodies. They're it's just, just their minds. minds. So what can parents do to make that better for the kids? You know what, and I understand because I'm a parent, 
I recognize that me being active and staying in sports and doing martial arts and doing basketball and track and football, it kept me out of trouble. Mm -hmm. to, to be honest, I didn't have any free time as a kid or, or as a teenager because as soon as I got out of school, I was in football practice. As soon as I was out of football practice, I was home doing my homework. I was done with my homework. I was playing video games. Well, what time did, did you guys ever have like a part time job when you were growing up? What age? Yeah, in high school. In okay. high school. Yeah. In, in between seasons. I started when I was like eight or ten with uh, the Maryland Gazette, and I had one of the largest paper routes mm -hmm. in Arundel County. Um, and they actually had to break it down and give it to three different people because it was so large when I quit. But that was something that I did, um, and that's something my mom did with me, you know, for a long time of my youth. So it's teaching your kids the value of experience and getting them to experience things, I think will lead to better stuff for you. And I think that's what you have to work on. You have to teach them why they want to do something, why they want to continue. Um, I, I don't ever want to force a kid, I don't think it's right out of it, force a kid to continue to do something that they don't want to do. But make sure that before you let them quit, that you've done your best to try to explain to them what the value is of staying in there finishing something and having something to come back on and be like, you know what, I did this even though I didn't want to do it. Because in life, there's a lot of things that you're not going to want to do that you have to do. So I, I think there's a lot of kind of values that are, that are lost right now. And that's also what's stopping a lot of uh, kids from being healthier. I think one thing that I'm going to bring up, and this, I'm, I'm going to put a disclaimer on this, this may hurt your feelings. Um, I think a lot of parents are in denial that their kids are overweight because a lot of the parents are overweight. Agreed. You know, and it's one of those things where you're not making your health, your fitness, your nutrition a priority. So why on earth would I think to make it for my kid? So it's one of those things where, uh oh, oh, I think we got technical difficulty. No, just low battery. Yeah, you might want to plug that in, but uh, what percentage was that? Ten. Oh, it'll last. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So. It, it, I would challenge parents that stop being in denial. You know, if you look at your kid, it, it's not always baby fat. You know what I mean? It's not always that prepubescent 10, 11, 12-year-old boy fat that he gets right before he hits his growth spurt, that kind of thing. Um, and, and for me, I, I tell people, I think it's selfish. You know, I think we're raising a generation of kids that are entitled, they're spoiled, they're lazy, and they grow up to be entitled, spoiled, lazy adults. And if they're overweight, they have excuses that their kids can use at a young age. Exactly. Big bone is not an excuse big to be overweight. There's no such thing excuse. as being big bone. It's not big bone. Everybody's bones are the same. I mean, everybody's bones are slightly different. But well, you know what I mean. Skeletal structure. You don't have a <laughs> all-around big no, skeletal nobody's, system. That uh, nobody, nobody's femur is that thick. No. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I think you guys are really getting some good points. I think that's things that, uh, that people tend to forget. You, your kids need to be active. Um, the amazing thing, though, is, and this is where I kind of differ, I think, from everybody else when you talk about nutrition. Um, your nutrition for a kid does not have to be your nutrition like you have. Their bodies are growing. Yeah, they're using growing. It's, it's a catalyst for growth. Their calories should be way different than yours in terms of what they're allowed to eat and how they eat things. Um, I'm with you, Brandon. I don't think punishing with food works. Right. But I also think that you shouldn't blame food. Um, your activities with your kid, and they're, they're, that's the most important thing. I'd be less concerned with the calories. And I, I grew up, I had McDonald's, I had Subway, I had a lot. Man, I would get done school. My mom would have had to take me to karate. I'd eat Subway on the way there, and then I'd have to come back to the cross practice or vice versa. So, like, we made stops. We had to do things like that. Now, I didn't get, like, the biggest, junkiest crap, and I didn't eat tons of it. But I ate what I needed to eat, and because of that, I, I was never a heavy kid. Um... But the activity there is what what right, it. And, and that's the next question would be: How much of kids' inactivity do you guys blame on technology? I don't want to blame it on the parents. Thank you. I was hoping one of you would say that because the thing is, I had video games growing up. You all have video games. I have tons of video games. Right. And, and no offense, <laughs> but I'm still trying to beat Resident Evil. That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> are you still playing at night too? <laughs> but if you really think Sad about it, you can only play at night because you got to be outside. <laughs> exactly. You play Resident Evil at night and ruins your whole day. Exactly. You can't sleep. You're like looking at everything. Damn game count 1995. I have yet to beat it. Exactly. Are you, are you serious right now? Yes. <laughs> Never beat it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Don't laugh. All right, come on. But the thing is, with technology, the, the the gaming experience for today's kid is no different than it was for us when our games first came out. It, it captured our mind and our attentions, but. Going outside was still a priority. The Christmas, graphics are better. Right, right so it. what? The graphics were amazing to us as kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah exactly, but when you think Metal about Gear? It, what, did, what did you get for Christmas? 
growing up. I always got a video game, but I also got a new bike. You need sports equipment? You got a new bike? I got a new bike. I got basketball. I got a football. I got something that's Baseball said, gun, BB gun. Yes. I got walkie-talkies from my yeah, boy. Yeah, walkie-talkies. So we outside right around. You know what I mean? Um, my parents encouraged it. and Tree forts all over the Matter of fact, now that I actually think back on it, video games came as, like, my stocking stuff. Not a stocking stuffer, but like my uh, allowance. Right. Like I had to work hard to put like a dollar into a jar for a video game. Okay. Like I had to do something, get a, get a dollar, put it in a jar. Once that jar gets whatever video games cost back then, three dollars, you no. get... Yeah. No, like, like, like 30 bucks, but <laughs> right. you buy the game with the money that you worked for. Um, but you still don't play during the day. You, you went outside and then at night time or the weekends with your buddies, like stay the night. That's when you play video games. Well, yeah, the big thing was that wasn't the main gift. The bike was the main right. gift. You yeah. know, baseball gloves. The, the, bat, the, the basketball hoop. Cross. Right. I mean, you know, yeah, that was, that was yeah, the main gift. And the funny thing is with that bike, man, I was on it. I didn't even open the rest of the presents. Yeah. I, I jumped on it and went outside. But, John, do me a favor. John shared a story with me, um, a, a, a particular situation about a family that just, I, I, making my blood boil is an understatement. And, and I want to share that with you. So, go ahead. Tell me tell what all right, I don't even know how to start this off. Um, so, a couple, I'm talking to a couple, um, friendly talk, nothing to do about fitness, and they get into the category that they are training for, they were training for a marathon. So, in their training for the marathon, they said that it was impossible for them to take their kids to sports and they had to pull them out of their recreation leagues so they could continue their training for their marathon. So basically they could accomplish some sort of a, you know, bucket list item so their kids suffered and both their kids are overweight. So you pull their they pulled their own children out of sports because they didn't have the time. They were trying to qualify for Boston, weren't they? Isn't that the story? Yeah. Something like whatever. That. Yeah. Doesn't matter what you qualified for. You qualified for asshole. Right. Yeah. Um, so they pulled their kids out of sports so they could run a little longer every day. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. It's honestly heart wrenching because you know. <laughs> I mean, there's just so much wrong with that. Well, well, the thing is with this this particular family because I've seen both these kids, and unfortunately, in a day and age where bullying. Cyberbullying is real. You're setting your kids up for failure. You're not giving them the best opportunity to have a great quality of life. They're going to grow up at, from being that overweight 8, 9, 10 year old to now being the overweight 13, 14, 15, 16 year old in high school. Like, are you, like, like, at some point, do you think about the ramifications of not only your actions, but your inaction? And these kids are sweethearts too. It's not like they're just like little jerks. They just, they're very understanding kids. They're like, oh, yeah, parents are training. And it's like, you make your kid out to be a quitter. Um, they're going to get bullied because they're overweight. They're going to get bullied because now that they're separating themselves from their friends in sports, I mean, to me, there's just so much more in depth to that than yeah, just and, pulling and your kid out of something they want to do. Right. And it's one of those things where I'm all for having some sort of balance. Like right. Mommy and, dad, mommy and daddy got to get their stuff done too. Um, and I've been the first person to say parents also need to know how to say no. That, you know, little Johnny can't have every single moment and every single activity. Oh, and it ends up compromising the parent. But at the same time, it's like, I just wish parents to take more accountability to the fact that if your child is obese, 99% of it is your fault. And it's because you're either Intentionally or unintentionally doing something that's setting them up. If you're on your way home from work, don't stop by McDonald's. There are other options. I'm so sick of hearing the words quick and easy when it comes to taking care of kids. It's, it's ridiculous. I got, I'm just looking at the... Well, hold on real quick. I got to get a chime in because I think I heard this from upstairs. I had to get a charging cord, guys, for our uh, camera in here. Um, if you are taking your kids out of something that they like to do or something that's keeping them active... For your needs, you need to look in the mirror and tell yourself you're selfish. Beyond. Because there's many days in the week and there's many things that you can do to make sure that you can get and do the things that you need to do and make sure that your kids are still there. That's ridiculous. Like, I, I have no heart for you. I, I'm sorry, I don't. Because to me, 
that just shows you that you're not on this mission. You're not, you're not with us and what we're about. So you really need to take a look at that and go, man, do you want your kid to struggle? Maybe like you're struggling right now, later on in life, because you took options away from them. Stop that cycle. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is a cycle. Um, and, and I'd be curious to know if that particular couple, if when they were kids, they were the obese kids and so forth. So um, I, I don't want to stay on that particular couple because it, it, woo! Well, I just want to say as an example, I'm looking at someone in this chat here, um, single father, daughter plays soccer, does ballet. He coaches the soccer team and he finds time to work out. There's another guy who comes into the gym who yeah. coaches his son's football team, yep. makes dinner, puts his kids to bed, shows up at the gym after hours, closes the place down, goes to bed, wakes up, goes to work, teaches his son's fo coaches his football team. It's like, it's like you, you're so selfish. There's there's enough hours in the day that you can go for a jog. Like, let, let's let's say it's that. Uh, let's stop calling them selfish because I think they get the point now, or that people understand that that is a selfish act. Look at it like this. If you really think that you can't organize your day schedule or, or figure things out for you, if you're really that hard, you know what? Suck it up. Come to us and ask us. Say, hey, do you think there's any time in there? Or you know what? Talk to each other. Figure out where you can actually put the time in the day for your kids because that's really a high indicator. I mean, you, you should be caring for your kids. Um, once you decide to have kids, that their, their whole well-being is your responsibility. So you're kind of dropping the ball. Yeah, and that goes back into knowing your community, making it work. Maybe you do want to finish this goal, and that's not a bad thing, but have some, like, have some resources that you can use to help you complete your goal and make sure your kids aren't tarnished by what you're doing. Right. So let's go over some very specific things. I got a couple emails from people this week. Um, one lady, single mom, um, says she really wants to get her, her son active, um, and he wants to be active, but it's just not safe for him to play outside right like just neighborhood and so forth. My solution to her would be to look into your community if you have some sort of a, um, like a, a boys and girls club. Um, when I was a kid, and me and John talked about this earlier, during the summer, some summers I didn't go to like a summer camp per se. My dad literally took me to Jell-O Boys and Girls Club at 8.30 in the morning when he went to work, handed me a $20 bill, and I stayed there until like five or six o'clock at night. If I wasn't swimming, I was playing basketball. If I wasn't playing basketball, I was downstairs playing video games. And if I wasn't doing that, I was still back in the pool. So I was always active. There are a lot of resources and things you can do if you just get off your butt and type in Google kids' activities and punch your zip code in. Like, one of the biggest things that drives me crazy is when people say, I don't know. But then if you ask them, have you ever just searched? Have you ever asked? Have you ever looked for some sort of solution to this I don't know? And when they say no, it's like, shut up. Like, you don't get to make an excuse if you've never even tried to look for the information. Like, that drives me insane. So, sorry to go off on a tangent. No, I've, I've, <laughs> I've had friends growing up that played on my, my city teams, and their kids don't live anywhere near there. They play for another organization in a worse area. You have a family member's address you can use, and you can put them in a better city league. Right. I mean... There's there's loopholes around it. It's not and it's not illegal. It's a family member, or a friend that they're technically can stay with, and you can use that to your advantage. Whew. I mean, I, I agree. I, I I think that the big thing is with safety and things like that. Keep your eye on your kids. Like go outside with them. Right. You know, go to the park with them. Make sure that they're chaperoned. Exactly. You know, there's a lot of weirdos on this planet. And unfortunately, with the way the media is, you know, we are ever present of them. Right. You know, and we know that they're out there, and that can that can do that can do a lot to a person's psyche. Um, do I think they were probably around when we all were little? Yes. Do I think that we probably were just not abreast of them? Yeah. All right. No, I would agree because I mean, when I was a kid, I lived in Rock Creek Park in D.C. over in Northwest. I mean, there were days where we would get on our bikes. And I would ride to the National Zoo. Mm -hmm. And we're talking at like 10, 11, 12 years old. It would be five of us riding through a park 20 miles away from my house. There's no way I'm letting my son do that. Ever. <laughs> it's, 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 no. It's just not safe anymore. So I get that. And that's why you have to make some of these organized sports priorities. Um, more importantly, if you don't have time to make 
that sport a priority, you need to find time to make your health and fitness and your kids' health and fitness mesh. Meaning, last Saturday, it was cold as I don't know what, but my son said, I want to play football in the fall. He can't catch to save his life. If I throw a ball in right now, it's hitting him square in the face. To me, it's a little embarrassing. I played ball 14 years. I had nice hands. So we went out, and I literally took the dog out, because my dog's getting old, he's getting a little overweight too. We went out to a field, I threw the ball around this kid for two hours. We literally were running routes, all kinds of stuff. How many times did you in the face? <sighs> but, at the but, end... But, at the end, <laughs> you know, we did three weeks worth of catching in like two hours, but at the end, he's catching it. You know, but he might have lost a tooth or something like that. <laughs> You know, if you haven't seen him, this if you know Brandon's over there like, ah, oh, throwing I was, I was, I was throwing that heat. I was, <laughs> you know, I was throwing the heat out. I, play, I played catch with Brandon the other day. He don't throw no heat. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see Brandon. I'm gonna see Brandon yeah. on Saturday. Be like, hey man, where's your molar at? <laughs> right. right, right. <laughs> Daddy hit me inside the face with football. Yeah, so if you ask why he's wearing sunglasses, it's because he's probably got hit in the forehead and got hey, guy or something like that. But at that age, you're more worried about how many passes you caught in front of Pops than that tooth that you're missing. Exactly. Now, he, that was another one, one, right? Yeah, they're baby teeth. Yeah, they're another one. <laughs> so, you know, I, I know we've been kind of mean. We've been kind of yelling, blaming. I haven't even scratched the surface of being I, mean. I, You know, I, I think we've tempered a little bit. But <laughs> let's I talk about... I know. This, I is guess. One, this is the one day I'd, I'd, want, I'd want you to get. <laughs> right, I really thought you were going to let him out the game. They gave me four words and they said, Gabe, you have to actually watch how much you talk today because we're afraid of the tangent that you're going to go on. All right, so let's. we've been beating people up in terms of parents' inaction and basically blaming parents for overweight kids. Obviously, that's not always the case. There are genetic issues. We get that. But let's, let's throw out some solutions. What are some indoor activities that kids can do during bad weather? Anybody got one? Yeah, let's uh, set up increments for your kids. You got push-ups, sit-ups, and just there's so many jumping it's jacks, like burpees. <laughs> like there's so many different things you can do with your kids that are fun, and you can make a competition. You can do things that 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 make them feel like they're accomplishing something. You know, doing something to do something is great if you're that motivated about doing it. Doing something and accomplishing something makes that whole process more worth value to them and to you too. I mean, that's a bonding experience. That should be something you should be excited about. I mean, I can't wait to have kids, honestly, and, and snowing outside because I'm going to peg them in the head with snowballs. Oh, I do all Like, that. I can't wait for that. I, yeah, I pick on myself. He's my little brother. Well, that's the thing. It's like I, I would look forward to those days when I have that interaction. So I feel like a lot of times you're taking that time for granted. Well, I'll just do it next week. Well, I'll do it this time. I, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll go off on you with that. Some of my greatest memories are when it was bad weather outside. My dad taught me how to build things. Yeah. Taught me how to fix things. Here, we're gonna we're gonna teach you how we're gonna teach you how to fix a hole in the wall. We're gonna teach you how to build this. You're gonna take this apart. You're gonna put it back together. Yeah. And I was hanging out with him, and it was awesome. But I, you know, I'm not tooting my own horn, but I can build a house from the ground up, from the foundation up. Like I've learned how to do it. And you know, it's one of those things that I can draw it all back to that one dude, to my father, hanging out with him when it was either bad weather or it was the weekend. And then, like, my mom, to keep me active and keep me out of her hair, because I was a rambunctious little child, uh, Still are. she used to always tell me, I'm going to time you. Did you guys ever get that from your mom? I want you to, I want you to go do this. I'm going to time you see how fast you can get it done. Yeah, no. it was always like, I want, I want you to wash the dishes. Right, see wash the dishes, no. go get the mail. No. I want you to go upstairs and grab this for me. I'm going to time you see how fast you can do it. You know what? It worked, though, because I was pretty fast. <laughs> and, and, and here's another thing. With these video games, there are a million of them that encourage kids to be, be fit. We, we, we make we what we, we fit. I was at. I was going to say, take use technology to your advantage in this right. case. The Xbox reads your whole body. It reads your body heat. You can literally, like, I think you can actually play Madden while you're, like, running in place now. Damn. Hell, play, what's the game called? Um... Twister. Play Twister. <laughs> we can do better than Twister, folks. So, but, I mean, you can play hopscotch. Set up hopscotch. If everybody, if you got a tile floor or something like that, set up a, the jump. Put on, jump or put on some music and dance. Just get moving. I used to dance with my grandma all the time in the kitchen. That's so the lot. next question. Oh, the, the, the next question I'm just gonna knock out real quick because I guess I, I'm being the only parent. Um, is what do you do for your kid when they are a picky eater in terms of nutrition and so forth? Um, 
this is going to sound very heartless, but guess what the number one winner is in that situation? Hunger, folks. Hunger will <laughs> always win. Um, my son literally would eat anything I eat or put in front of me, and it's, it's been my games with him. I'll be like, you're not going to get muscles. You'll be the same height if you don't eat this, that kind of thing. My son has literally asked his teachers how much protein is in that before. Now, I get most kids don't do that because they don't grow up with a, a dad who's in the gym. but And they're so buff. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, I, I firmly believe in kids should be able to eat kid foods, but at the same time, don't coddle them. You know, like, I, I see all the time kids come to the gym and they're just like, Mommy, can I get a cookie? And it's like, you really want to say no, but you're just trying to keep the kid quiet so you say yes? Say no. Kids need to hear no occasionally. I mean, I'm, I'm going to chime in, obviously, I'm not a parent, but look at your food choices. If your kid has a problem with the food, ask them why. Don't just ask them if they like it or not. Find out something, because it could be just the way that you cook it, and they could change yeah. it around. Or it could be a texture thing. Exactly. Some texture snack. I, I'm, I'm one of those people. I can't stand textures. I love the way onions taste, but if I eat them, I'm like, oh, that's nasty. You know, one person comment, if you don't eat what's in front of you, you're not that hungry. Look, that's how I grew up. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. I, I grew up, Friday was like the day we went out. Monday was like, I don't know, pork chop night or something like that. I never pork went Whatever. We always had, like, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, spaghetti was like right. tonight. So we always had, like, Taco like, Tuesday. You know, we, Chicken we, tenders were one night. But, but yeah. growing up, we always had kind of specific foods. We had a routine. And if I didn't eat what my mom made, I just wasn't eating. You know, yeah, like, and, by, and by the time I got done eating that spinach, I didn't even want dessert. That was exactly. So, so it's... it's <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so here's another one. Don't get um, caught in the kitchen after I... No. <laughs> I think we've already answered this, but I'm, I'm going to throw it out just to make sure we did. What if I'm a single parent and my job just... I don't have the schedule to be able to get him to like the 4 p.m. practice that I really want him to participate in. I would say try to get some help. For me, I work every single day. Contact the coach. Yeah, my off day is 12 and after, Saturdays and Sundays. Grandma has been, like, the best thing that ever happened to me because she lives close. Stop trying to score brownie points. Shut up, man. That's exactly what I was going to do. Because I was about to ask you, hey, mom, can you pick Bray up today? (laughs) (laughs) I got to work late. But get help. You know, that's the best thing I can talk to. Also... Reach out to the coach of that particular activity. Because your brother, your alone. sister, heck, I picked yeah. my niece up before. Because I'm telling you now, it, you're not alone. There are a lot of single parents who have kids who are in organized sports. But if you don't talk to the people running those sports, you'll, you'll never know if they have some sort of solution. The coaches, the martial arts, don't they have minivans that pick you up? Certain schools do. Certain schools, you see it all the time. But the biggest thing is that you just said, talk with other parents. Yeah. Because generally, if someone lives near you and someone's already taking their kid there, People it's really not that much of an issue. Right. They pick them up, you, then you pick them up after, after yeah, the Yeah, you bring them home. home. That's, that's fair. Yeah, that's, that's a team. That, that's how the soccer team was when we were all little. You yeah. Know? Yeah, that, As, everybody rotated days. And the know? coach will always help. I've never been on a team where the coach wouldn't help somebody out who needs it. Yeah, because at the end of the day, the coach is doing it because he enjoys it, and he's there for the kids. Um, Let's see. The last one that I saw in here were some other solutions, like very, very specific solutions that you guys can think of. Um, I thought of a couple. Jump Zone. Jump Zone is one that my son likes to go to. It's one of those bouncy house things. He goes in, they jump up and down. Laser tag. Is that expensive? No, um, it's not that bad. No, it's not that bad. Except the problem is with those type of places is that they, they, they get crowded really quickly. So you almost have to make appointments to take them there. Um, but go play laser tag. Go play paintball. Cub and Girl Scouts. I'm all about paintball. You know, I, I was a Cub Scout as a kid. You know, it's one of those things where they encourage kids to be active. They'll get them out the house and so forth. Um, do you know what's really awesome to do, honestly, during this time of year? It's snowing and, like, you get you get trapped in with your kids. Shovel? So, that works too. Yeah, put the middle punks to work. Um, no, surprise your kids. Go buy some Nerf guns. Yeah, some and those are awesome. And then when they're just sitting there and they're playing on their game, just come around the corner and pelt them. And then be like, game one, and just leave a leave a gun for them to shoot back and have fun with it. That put your breakables away beforehand. I don't know about you guys, but like, go go, go, go grab your pillowcase and go run over and smack them in their head. Oh, hell yeah. I get, I, I get in wrestling matches with my son all the time. Right? right? We're exhausted. After That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> like, engage them. And sometimes you have to engage them like a kid. You don't have to engage them as an adult. Don't, 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 be, that, afraid, don't yeah. be afraid to act like a kid. You know? It, like, I act like a kid with my niece all the time. She loves it. I thought you were going to say all the time, yeah. Um, another one I think all of us kind of grew up with pets, except for Johnny, who's got ridiculous allergies. No, I grew up with dogs. I didn't know until after I moved out. Buy a dog. I mean, it's one of those things where, one of the things I did, my sister was six years older than me. We never interacted once she got into high school. But I always had a dog. We had a big backyard. 
I would go out back and just run around with the dog. I'd kick a soccer ball, he chased me, I'd chase him. I would take him for walks. That was my responsibility. I got home from school, you walked the dog. Um, what else? You said martial arts already. Um, let's see, community centers, swimming. Playground. Playground. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, I didn't even think of that. The playground. It's a damn playground. You can do anything at the playground. And it's free. It's. I used to love going to the playground. You can playground. do pull-ups, you can do Technical monkey bars, you can do the slide. Yeah, you're running, awesome. going up those stairs, sliding down. Or, you know, you got, like, a splashdown, places like that in Howard County, you know. You I can, mean, you can go hit the water slides, yeah. go swim. I mean, I'll go to splashdown. You all want to go to splashdown? Look, it, 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 there's a park in my mom's house every time I go visit her, and I'm almost tempted. And I do do it probably, like, one in eight tries. I actually pull in and go jump on the swing set. Right. So, <laughs> so much because I'm like, bye, bye, they don't usually work too well for me. Though, so I, I would also say, parents, so take today to start to think about what can you do to encourage your kids to be active. Right now, we're all probably going to be out Christmas shopping for these people, for these kids. Rather than buy them a bunch of video games and a bunch of things that are going to encourage them to just sit still all the time, mix in the Nerf gun, buy a new bicycle, wrap up a football or a basketball or something that's going to encourage them to get out and be active. More importantly, something that you can go out and be active with your kid. I mean, they need to see you doing it. I, my son will literally do silly stuff like push-ups in front of me, and I, I've got film. I would totally post a video of my son doing push-ups after this, and he does it simply because he's seen me do it. They do exactly what you're doing. So, biggest point is be a role model. You know, if your kid is obese and is inactive, I hate to say this, but look in the mirror. Yeah, because they're going to grow up to be you. I mean, she. They're going to grow up to be you. So, I mean, you guys have anything else you want to add? No, I think uh, we're actually running out of time. Um, we, we're going to touch up on this next week as well. Uh, so what we're doing is, because we're talking about all this, next Saturday, it's next Saturday now in case we've talked to anybody and said this Saturday. Next Saturday, do you have a date on that, Brandon? Yeah, that would be the 17th. 17th. So next Saturday, the 17th at 10 a.m., we are having a boot camp. If you share any of these live feeds... Um, all you have to do is share it on Facebook, and your kid comes for free. Um, share spelled S H A R E. It's this little button. Not this got, one. You got like, comment, and share. Remember, folks, sharing is caring. Take share. your finger and touch the button. Yeah, and there's gonna be kids there. It's gonna. We're gonna make it fun. Um, it's gonna be something that hopefully that they want to keep coming back to. And as long as. You know, you guys keep listening. They keep coming back for free. That's on us. Exactly. So we're doing, once again, we're doing a free boot camp December 17th, 10 a.m. Um, at Powerhouse Gym, 7476 Newbridge Road, Hanover. All you have to do is to share any of our podcasts. Your kid has free admission. Don't forget, you're working out with them. Yeah. This isn't for <laughs> just kids. Yeah, don't think you're, you're coming, coming in to and get your butt too. Yeah, don't come in and sit down or don't text me talking about what time am I dropping them off and picking them up. Mm -hmm. we're, not not there. There. we're not babysitting. You know, you guys are working out, so... Um, you guys got anything else you possibly think? Yeah, if you guys need help finding a program, reach out to us. I mean, we, we all are busy, but we'll try and find time to find something for your kid, especially if you're having a hard time finding it. Um, I don't know about you if you have stuff relations with your martial arts school, but mm -hmm. if you guys are looking for martial arts stuff too, uh, reach out to one of us. I mean, we both have a lot of experience. There, there's so much out there, guys, um, but you have to ask. I just thought about this. What about, let's do a little toy drive too. All, okay. all sports stuff. Let's do all something that you can do outside. Five and, five and Below has so many things that you could just buy, and we'll get a big box going, and we'll take it to the children's hospital or take it to a community that needs something. Sounds perfect. I love it. I love it. So, so toy drive, free boot camp. All you have to do is hit the share button. Um, if you guys have any all questions. All four of us will be there. We'll all be there. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, as usual, I always forget, where can they find us? The, the Fit Forecast, Instagram, Fit Forecast, Facebook. Two years from now. Um, yeah, like, share, and then seriously, if you have anything that you want to add on the subject that you didn't get to tune in live with us, leave us a comment, send us a message. We're coming back to the same topic next week, and then be ready to get your bus kicked at boot camp on the 17th. All right, folks. Thank you, guys. Thanks, you guys. Now the usual dead silence of John, right. John breaking, breaking stuff. It would be funny. Dude, go to where my phone. Like, what do you film? Right now? We're hiring interns to just press the live feed button off. Um, when we say hiring, we mean we're going to pay you with um, training. Bangs. And chicken. Wait, what? <laughs> where did that come from?